All right, everyone, welcome to Physics 180. Uh, my name is Matt Pusco, and I will be your instructor for this semester. Um, all of our lectures are going to be delivered like this, with me drawing just like I would on a dry erase board. Uh, it's the best I can possibly do. I, I successfully did this for two engineering courses that are basically just a level up from this class. Um, over the summer and during the transition in the Mar in March when we actually had to go remote and go online and had really good results. So um, just hang in there with me, just try to do what I ask and hang out in Discord and ask questions. Um, let's start out with just like what is physics? I'm sure you've had teachers go over this before. You've all you've all taken it, but it's necessary. Let's, we need to know why we're doing what we do because regardless of your major, physics is crucial. Physics was the first science. Um, Galileo discovered motion of the planets. He he observed the moons of Jupiter. He realized that we were not the center of the universe. Um, this goes back really far before Isaac Newton even helped explain this stuff. Um, what we're going to be studying mainly is what's called classical physics, um, but there's so many different realms of physics, and I'm going to give an example of what when one realm does work and when another doesn't. So if we're looking at stuff in this class where we can measure a, a, a decent sized mass that has motion, Isaac Newton's laws that we're going to learn are going to are going to work fantastic. But if you're a physicist or maybe a material scientist or something, um, you may need to start looking into the quantum realm to look at the motion of things like particles. Um, so Isaac Newton's theories only work on this large scale, while Albert Einstein's work on both. We still learn Isaac Newton's because they work a little bit easier for us, and we tend to learn physics the way that history tells it. Um, and there's a good reason for that. If you're into history at all, I'm not really, but the history of physics is fantastic. There's a reason why every experiment came out. There's a reason. Things like war, even. Um, that's why discoveries were made. Um, I'll, I'll try to enlighten you along the way with as many of those cool little physics history tidbits as I can. Um, but what is physics? We still haven't identified it. Well, it's literally just an attempt to describe the natural phenomena around us. And you can find a million definitions for this. We're just trying to describe what we can observe. That's a key word, what we can observe. Um, what does observe mean? Well, like you've been observing things your whole life with the, the senses that you have in your body, such as sound or the, the ability to hear, if you have that, some don't, um, the ability to see, the ability to feel, things like that. Um, we can take pretty rough measurements with that. Your eyeball knows pretty dang well what a foot looks like, probably, but it might not know what a thousand feet looks like. So we need ways to measure that. And guess what? In this class, we're not going to be measuring things with feet very much, and I'll go over that in the next lecture. Uh, next lecture, we're going to be moving to what's called the SI unit of measure, and if you're an engineer, you'll end up going back into uh, the feet slug um, unit of measure. Um, in this case, we will be using things like meters, things like seconds, things like kilograms for mass. And the next lecture, we'll go over how to measure all those. Um, so our attempt to describe these laws involves mathematics. If we can make a mathematic model of the situation we're trying to describe, then we can use that model to predict things in the future and actually things in the past. So I don't know if you knew it, but Often when you take a square root of, to get an answer of some number, you might get a plus and minus answer. Or if you put something in the quadratic formula, you might get two answers. Um, you always get two answers, but you neglect the negative answer sometimes. Well, 
the negative answer actually has meaning. And if you follow, let's say we were looking at the projectile motion or a parabolic motion of something, um, if you followed that back in time, that negative answer would tell you where it is or its velocity or its acceleration back in time. So the negative answer does have meaning, but we're typically going to be using the positive answer. Um, what we're going to be doing in this class is primarily studying particle motion. Actually, only particle motion. You'll learn about wave motion in your next physics class. Um, and then it, it goes much deeper to class uh, to what's called modern physics. At the end of the 19th century, um, a lot of the new phenomena we were seeing, things with like the electron and stuff, were not explainable by our classical physics models. We had to use theories of relativity and quantum mechanics and look at things on the atomic level. Um, this developed the field of quantum mechanics, and if you're a physicist, you'll get into that. Um, but as a physicist or any kind of scientist, we're constantly looking at improving all of these fundamental laws. And bottom line, they, they all don't work. Um, an important note, there's a big difference um, between prediction and theory. Uh, if we are, sorry, predicting a theory and the experimental results. So we have theory and experiment when we do science. Exper can't spell experiment right so the, the typically scientists are broken up into one or the other a theorist a theorist comes up with a theory and then hands the experiment off to an experimentalist the experimentalist to do his best job should have no idea what the theory is or what he's expecting to look for um, the experimentalist just follows the instructions of how to observe the phenomena and, without bias, gives back the results. And we can form new laws that way. Um, but it's just, I need to say, there's a discrepancy between the prediction of a theory and experimental results. Um, new or modified theories must be formulated to remove any discrepancies. Um, and this one of these is when I mentioned Newton's laws. You've seen these before. Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law is law of gravitation. I'm going to go over all these, don't worry. Um, well, those don't always work, so we had to go into the quantum realm or the relativistic realm in certain cases for stuff like modern physics. We had to, we had to find new, new methods. All right, um, there's so much beauty in physics. I hope you see that. I hope I can make that for you. And I hope the last thing I want is for you to hate physics and hate this class. If you're in here, that's because you're a scientist. If you weren't a scientist, you'd be in a different level of my physics or a different level of physics class, not physics 180. And one more note, calculus and math. These are your tools. Calculus, geometry, and algebra. These are the tools we need and we need to be fluent with them. We have to... All, most of the definitions I'm going to give you and uh, laws are going to be derived from calculus. Newton's laws, I'll show you how they're actually derived. Or, um, some of the kinematic equations you've seen your whole life, I'm going to actually derive them for you, involves calculus. Um, our solutions are almost always going to involve more than one equation, in which you have to use algebra. And geometry is probably in every single problem. Um, we're given some sort of scenario, maybe a cannon shoots off at some velocity, v naught at some angle, theta. And we need to break that up into components and make a triangle out of it. Or maybe we have just something hanging from the ceiling and uh, a mass. And we need to break up the force in this tension right here into its components. I'll show you how to do this, and you may have done it before. But we need to break that up into its x and y components. Um, 
geometry, algebra, and calculus. If you have any questions with those, reach out in here or reach out to any of the services we have on campus. If you're in Engineering 101, there's special services in there too. Um, all right, there we go. That's physics. Um, the next lecture will be on how to measure stuff.